How many people want to see good things? <laughs> One person in the front row here, he was doing his aerobics just a minute ago. Did you see him do that? It's amazing. I'm coming forward. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. I know that Sunday usually at Easter is, is like wild and just time constraints with family and things like that. But I'm telling you, something special is happening. And something special is happening tonight. I believe I'm under instructions from the Lord to go into Psalm 91. And uh, there's always a reason for these things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like I know Psalm 91 is a daily part of our lives. And, you know, if not daily, uh, weekly for sure. How many people knows that? I mean, and it's never far from, you know, from the table. Praise the Lord. But, you know, maybe I could share some things tonight with you that will really bolster your interest in Psalm 91 and believe uh, that Psalm 91 is happening and that regardless of what's going on in the world, we can, we can trust the Lord. Amen. Psalm 91 is full in full operation in our lives. We can trust him. How many people believe you can trust him? We can trust him. Hallelujah. So good to see you. If you're visiting tonight, welcome. We're a Cried Participation Church. Amen. I participate. You participate. We all participate. Praise the Lord. I move my hands. You move your hands. I shout amen. You shout amen. Praise the Lord. If I dance a little bit, you dance. Praise the Lord. And if I was to run tonight, that means you run too. Don't get nervous. Praise the Lord. <laughs> some, of you, some of you get nervous looking for the exits. Where is the exit? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, you know, for, for 30 years or more now, you know, since Karma myself come into really what we, what we know to be is a tremendous revelation of just, you know, Christ in us, the hope of glory, and that the word being final authority in our lives is hard to believe, <laughs> amen, that that amount of time has gone by. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to believe that we've used it to the best of our ability, but I'm sure we can always do more. Um, but I, I, just, I just believe and I just thank God for the word. Amen. How many people thank God for his presence this morning? It was so amazing. My goodness. Praise the Lord. And uh, so we just, we just go into this tonight with full expectation. And we just thank the Lord that, that we're, we're in a place, um, not necessarily just millennial, but we're in a place in our lives that we know, you know, that, that there is power uh, in, in the word. And that the word upholds everything in our lives. Amen. And the word is not something that you just read just to fulfill your devotions. Amen. It's what you, you know, allowed to construct uh, and instruct your lives. And there is that then in the unseen that goes, goes into operation in our lives to really uphold, uh, hold the threads of our lives together. And uh, I'm just so grateful, praise the Lord, amen, to know this stuff tonight. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that you're not coming to the Lord saying, Lord, I hope you've got this. We know he's got it. <laughs> Aren't you glad that, that you can go in and face tomorrow knowing that, that you know, something sure, something firm uh, is at work and not just, you know, oh man, you know. I know on the way home today, I know Cindy had a bit of a wreck in the car, but thank God for Psalm 91. Praise the Lord. Amen. She's here tonight and, uh, you know, airbags deployed and all of those different things. But, amen, I want you to stretch your hands towards her just now. Put your hand up, Cindy, so everybody knows who you are. Praise the Lord. Right up. Praise the Lord. Right up. There you are. Praise the Lord. Uh, just pray, get, pray in the spirit with me right now over Cindy. We take authority over every negative impact of that accident in the name of Jesus. Uh, we just declare in the name of Jesus that she's strong and healthy. And that every part of her being is, is, is strong. Praise the Lord. I just declare it that there is no, uh, what would you say, effects of that. In the name of Jesus, whiplash, we take authority over it. We just declare that your body, amen, is just aligned perfectly in, in, the, in the plan and the purpose of God. In the name of Jesus. And, and we just take authority over that moment, the scar of that. In the name of Jesus, just the enemy coming to steal. And uh, we refuse you to be stolen from in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We just declare that Cindy's joy is full. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, and uh, that the next car that she's getting, the new car that she's getting, is going to be better than the last one. Amen. So we just agree for this in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. It was time for a change of a car anyway, Cindy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're just, we're just moving it right along. Hallelujah. 
you know, you got to look on the bright side. You got to look on the good side. And God's got a plan. Praise the Lord. Amen. What the enemy means for bad, God can turn for good. Watch for these little things, you know, that the enemy trying to rob. The enemy just, you know, just having little things just set up, you know, in your way, in your path, you know. You're having a good time when somebody says something, just wipes the floor with you. They don't even know they said it. Just, you know, we take authority over these little things. In the name of Jesus, amen. <laughs> so let's go to Psalm 91. You know it well. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm going to read out of my Bible tonight, the Amplified Version. Uh, whoever's up there in the sky, maybe if I ask for a different translation, you can work with me tonight. Uh, praise the Lord. <laughs> amen. For those that are visiting, it's not really the sky. It's up here in the, um, in the upper rooms. Praise the Lord. So let's do this together. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. I love that. Whose power no foe can withstand. Whose power no foe. Everybody say no foe. Say foe sure. No, no foe. <laughs> Anybody have any chocolate today? <laughs> Woo, I love Easter for chocolate, hallelujah. But uh, anyway, we had some chocolate today, so if I act a little wonka, you'll know. Praise the Lord. Some of you didn't get that either. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello. <laughs> whose foe, whose power no foe can withstand. I will say of the Lord, I want you to underline that, circle that, highlight that in your device. I will say of the Lord, our mouths must be engaged. This is just not just, you know, you know, well, I just take this for granted, you know. No, we have, we have something to do with this. There's a declaration, there's a decree, there's an alignment with our mouths, there's an alignment with our tongue, praise the Lord. He's given us the tongue of the wise, praise the Lord. And it's wise for us to get ourselves in agreement uh, with what's being said here. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God in him I lean and rely, and in him I confidently trust. For then he will deliver me from the sn snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover me with his w opinions and under his wings shall I trust and find refuge. His truth, his truth, his truth, praise the Lord, buy the truth and sell it not. Amen. Thy word is truth. Amen. His truth is what? What does it say? And his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. I shall not be afraid of the terror of the night, nor of the arrow that plots, and slanders of the wicked that fly by day. Now let's just stop there just for a moment. We take authority over the accuser of the brethren. In the name of Jesus, amen. I just sense this real strong tonight that this is the Lord uh, regarding just going after this Psalm 91. And uh, there's a conviction that comes within us and a belief that comes within us that this is what's happening. You know, what the enemy loves to do is he loves to slander you. He loves to just, you know, get something, a little bit of mud and just sling it your direction, cause a few ripples around your life. Amen. And that's what he's called, the accuser of the brethren. Well, we take authority over all accusations tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. We just declare that there's a good report that's going out in Jesus' precious name. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against you, you will show to be in the wrong. Amen. I take authority over, I, can, I feel it so strongly for somebody right now. I would take authority over just that devilish. It, it, what does it say here? Wicked. It's evil. It's wicked. Look at this. The evil plots and slanders of the wicked that flies by day. We take authority over that wickedness, spirits of wickedness in the name of Jesus. Say that with me. I bind spirits of wickedness. Now do this with me also. I take authority over a spirit of Leviathan in the name of Jesus. Anything that would try to twist my speech or twisted speech trying to come against me. I bring it to none. I plead the blood. I look to the Lamb in the name of Jesus. Remember this morning's message? We look to love. We look to authority. Come on. We look to the mastery over all satanic operations. And we look to the blood tonight. Come on. We lift high the blood. 
Amen. We bind up every satanic operation in the name of Jesus. We bring it to naught. We declare that we're seated and clothed and in our right minds in the name of Jesus. Come on, do you believe this tonight? Come on, it's not a pep rally. It's not me trying to rally you tonight. I believe this is God. Amen. There are things that are coming that we need to know that we are seated far above the mess. And then what God does through us is bring order to the chaos. We are not part of the chaos. He brings order through us to the chaos. We must never succumb to the chaotic rhetoric that wants to fuel and wants to feed this time that we are living in. That's why the Lord gave us Nehemiah. Amen. I've been in Nehemiah. Praise the Lord. You know, more and more and more. Praise the Lord. More and more and more. Just going through it, over it, and over it, and over it. And it's amazing. It amazes me even today, since 2015, when the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me about Nehemiah. And he said, don't come off the wall. And he paralleled that with me with Ephesians 2. And he said, just like Nehemiah, I told him, don't come off the wall. I'm telling you, don't come out of your seat. Stay in your seat far above all in rule and reign. Things will come that will try to berate, emotionally berate, uh, try to uh, cause upheaval emotionally, but stay on the wall. Don't be baited. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, we must never be baited in the name of Jesus, nor must we be bait. We must never be baited. What Nehemiah went through, even just last night, I, you know, tell you, I never went to bed. I, I just stayed upstairs uh, just the whole night and just went, you know, just going through things. Even last night I was in Daniel and I was going through again what Daniel actually went through to accomplish what it was that he was asked by the Lord to do. You know, sometimes we read the book of Daniel, but that's as far as we go. You know, we just read it. You know, it's like we, we do devotions with the word. But, you know, we need to place ourselves there. We need to get the backstory. We need to know what it was like. I'm telling you, you know, in Nehemiah's time, Tobias, Tobias did not want Nehemiah doing what he was doing. Do you know that there are spirits at work that do not like what you do? I'm not going to try over here. There are things at work that do not like what you do, but I want you to lift your hand and say, too bad, too sad, amen. I am anointed to do what it is, amen. And there is a way to do it, shut it out. There is a way to do it. And one of the things that you cannot do is take stock of the narrative that wants to swirl around you because that's what Tobias and Symbolic wanted to do to Nehemiah. Wanted to put him in such a place. It says, what's the use? What's the purpose? Back off and retreat. But Nehemiah was given a job. And he was given a job to build that wall back and put the gates back in it. Amen. Did God know that he could do it? Absolutely. Does God know that you can do it? Absolutely. Will you do it? Absolutely. You're not backing off. You're not retreating. You're going to get it done at all costs in the name of Jesus, regardless of what happens, regardless of what. And, and that's, the, that's the horrid thing. You know, when the plan of Sambalat and Tobias didn't work, you know, in a private level, they went public, starting to send letters here, there, and everywhere. That's just like Facebook or Disgracebook today. All of those different things. You know, we've got X, whatever it's called. We, we've got, you know, and now we've got Truth Social and, and all of those different things. <laughs> Your determination is whether you believe is truth or not, praise the Lord. But there is truth out there. I'm going to say it again. There is truth out there. I bind the spirit of deception. I take authority over seduction. Welcome to the way I operate and work in my life. Amen. Say this with me. I take authority over the baiting of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, say this with me. I refuse to be pulled emotionally. Now, how many people believe this is a good word? How many people believe we need this word? And how many people believe that you need to put this word in practice more than what you have? I know you do. I know we do. Praise the Lord. Now, look at this. It says in verse 6, nor of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor of the destruction and sudden death that surprised and lay wasted in a day. It's the same as Daniel. They were out to get him. They didn't want Daniel. 
they didn't, <laughs> they did not want him doing anything because he really showed everybody else up to be what they really were. And a lot of times that's the real issue, ladies and gentlemen. People don't like the real thing coming because it shows up the gray in people's lives. But you get somebody that's living a life with no compromise. You get, I'm telling you, it's amazing the dust that wants to fly. What is the enemy on? Huh? The enemy's trying to come to steal, kill, destroy. He wants to rob, wants to take away from. Amen? The enemy never wants to add to. You know, the enemy's not going to prop you up as a shining light. Amen? He wants you to come down. I mean, he doesn't want you to rise again. He doesn't want you to be seen for, you know, being touched by God and anointed by God for whether it's the church or whether it's business or, you know, whether it's family, being the best mom, being the best dad, you know, being the best sibling that you could possibly be. Enemy, enemy doesn't want that. He will always try to work at it that there is something else to rob you of your joy. Just think of Cindy today, going out of a service like what we had today and that happening. Bam, something like that. I mean, you know, like a little bit of a wreck like that on the route going home. That's enough to take the joy. That's enough to take the pep out of your step. It takes an extraordinary individual, amen, to keep that pep in your step and say, you know what? It, it's not bothering me in the slightest, amen? And even for the best of us, it still would have caused a little wrinkle in our day. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. <laughs> Only a spectator shall I be, myself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High, as I witness the reward of the wicked. In one of these days, I'm going to witness the reward of the wicked. And you can't operate in this, these, 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 wicked, these wicked, you know, operations in, in, in with wicked spirits and not receive a harvest from that. You know, God is not mocked. I say God is not mocked. I want to say it one more time. God is not mocked. Some of these evil people that are doing evil things right now, even in high places in government, God is not mocked. Psalm 2 says that he, the Lord sits in the throne and laughs as the nations reel against him. Don't be getting, you know, down and, you know, I just can't believe they're doing that. And oh my God, I mean, can you imagine what they did Easter Sunday and making it transgender? And listen, God knows all about that. Amen. Things are wa waxing worse and worse. But for the church, we shouldn't, we shouldn't fall apart at that. Amen. We should raise our voice louder in the praises and the exclamation knowing, amen, that Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many people believe Jesus is actually coming? He's coming. But there's a great event that's going to happen before he comes. Amen. And that is our leaving. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to rise to meet him in the air. And some, you know, I've heard this all my life. People have told me this all my life. I'm so tired of this. You know, you know well, praise the Lord. Amen. When, 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 you, when you're waking up and we're not here and you have to go through the tribulation period, praise the Lord, you will wish that you listened because I'm going in the rapture. Amen. Let's just bless him right now. I'm going. In the, well, I don't believe that. I'm a mid-trip. I'm a, I, listen, you just need to get your head screwed on straight. Amen. We are going in the rapture. Amen. Before the tribulation takes place. Once we're out of here, you don't want to be here. I'm going to say that again. Once we are out of here, Thessalonians says we are restraining right now. And once the church is out of here, somebody says, well, I believe that's the Holy Spirit that is taken. The Holy Spirit cannot be taken away. People are going to be saved and no one can come on to Jesus except the Spirit. So the Spirit of God has to say here. So this straightens out our theology very quickly. It is not the Holy Spirit that is taken away. It is the church that is taken away. Well, I'm glad. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, the rapture can come anytime for all I care. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, I, I want a little bit of life yet. I want to see this and want to see that. There's life after the rapture. Hallelujah. We're going to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And then some. <laughs> you think God's using you now? You think you're tired of church now? 
you better get ready. <laughs> Because you're going to be busy. You think, God, man, I just can't believe that God and the pastor can ask me to do so much. I mean, <laughs> I mean you better get ready for those thousand years, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And if you're afraid of horses, you better get over that fear pretty quickly. Praise the Lord. Because I'm telling you, old Ned's going to be looking for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Look at you here and say, get it up there. Come on, let's go. Oh, he's so good. They try to make the Christian walk so mundane, so boring. Oh, in him we live and move and have our being. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. Wow! Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the Lamb, King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship him, we glorify him. You're so amazing, Father. We bless you tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, may take your seats because I have made the Lord my refuge and the most high my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor any plague or calamity come near my tent. For he will give his angels a special, I love that, a special charge over me to accompany me and defend and preserve me in all my ways of obedience and service. They shall bear me up upon their hands, lest I dash a foot against a stone. You imagine how many angels were with Cindy today when that wreck happened? Amen. There's no way she was going down. There's no way that she was being taken out. Amen. She was inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They shall bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent, shall you trample underfoot, because I have set my love upon him. Therefore, he will deliver me. Huh? He will set me on high, because I know and understand his name. I have personal knowledge of his mercy, his love, his kindness. I trust and rely on him. I know that he will never forsake me. No, never. Amen. I will call up, or he will call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Come on, something good is happening. Father, we give you praise for this tonight. We thank you for the power of the word being strong in our lives in the name of Jesus. Come on, declare this, this resurrection day. Something powerful is taking place in my life. Oh, I need my Bible, sorry. <laughs> Praise the Lord, glory to God. Hallelujah. Do you know, there's many people, you know, that still are wondering and question who actually wrote this Psalm. It is no real title, but therefore the author still remains somewhat unknown. Many have made a stab at it because it shares some of the themes of Psalm 90. Some think Moses was the author because it shares some of the themes and phrases of Psalm 27 and 31. So some think that David is the author. Some of its language of strongholds and shields reminds us of David, to whom the Septuagint ascribes it. Other phrases echo the song of Moses, Deuteronomy 32, as did Psalm 90, but it is in fact anonymous and timeless, perhaps all the more accessible for that. G. Campbell Morgan said this, many have noted the wonderful character of this psalm, 
This psalm is one of the greatest possessions of the saints. Beautiful. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said this, in the whole collection there is not a more cheering psalm. Its tone is elevated and sustained throughout faith, is, is at its best and speaks nobly. Another thing that Spurgeon said was this, it is one of the most excellent works of its kind which has ever appeared. It is impossible to imagine anything more solid, more beautiful, more profound, or more ornamented. It's amazing. So let's look again then at Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. I will start this tonight and finish it next, next Sunday night. Because I believe that the Spirit of God wants us to grasp this, lay hold of it in the name of Jesus so that we can stand strong and know no matter what comes, amen, we are protected. Shout that out again. We are protected. So Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 says, He who dwells in the secret place uh, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him, I will trust. Amen. So what does it say? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. God has given us a secret place for his own. We are his. We are his family. And he has provided a secret place for us. Go with me to Psalm 27, please. Verse 5. Psalm 27. You don't mind if I teach for just a couple of minutes. Psalm 27, verse 5. For in the day of trouble, he will hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his tent will he hide me. He will set me high upon a rock. Everybody say high. high. He will set me high upon a rock. Then look at Psalm 31, verse 20. I'm not going to keep you long tonight. Psalm 31, verse 20. In the secret place of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You keep them secretly in your pavilion from the strife of tongues. Wow. Lift your hand and say, I receive this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let's, let's read it again. Everybody ready? Praise. Are you there? Are you looking at it? Verse 20. In the secret place of your presence... You hide me from the plots of men. You keep me secretly in your pavilion from the strife of tongues. We receive this in the name of Jesus. We take authority over what? That wicked speech. Amen. But I am being protected. Amen. Say that with me. I am being protected. Hidden from the strife of tongues. Amen. Isn't that good? We take authority over strife tonight in the name of Jesus. We refuse that bitter envy. We refuse that confusion. We ref refuse every evil work to operate in our lives. Amen. Our tongue is given to that which is good. Amen. We don't speak out of both sides of our mouths. Amen. We speak on with fixed purpose. We look on with fixed purpose. Amen. And we declare that out of the abundance of our heart, our, heart, our mouths are speaking good good things. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if good things are coming out of our minds, guess what? Our youth is being renewed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at this. So God has a secret place for his own, and it is a place that he doesn't want us to visit. He wants us literally to live in it, live there. Those who dwell there abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I love that. Knowing his protection, knowing his comfort, and knowing his care. In Psalm 90 verse 1, Moses spoke of God as the dwelling place of his people. The opening lines of Psalm 91 seem to take that idea further. Moses spoke of God as the dwelling place, the habitation, and the home of man. This singer seems to accept that the great idea and then to speak of the most central chamber of the dwelling place, referring to it as the secret place and describing it as complete security. And this was from Morgan. Complete security. I want you to lift your hand and say, I have complete 
security. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I just sense the presence of the Lord. Amen. What are we doing? We're stirring this up. We're making it known. We're making it known to everything that is around us right now. The angels for good and the demons for bad. We're making a declaration that we know that angels are on assignment to help us, to assist us in every area, in every operation of our lives. Amen. We're letting those demons know they have a hope in the name of Jesus of getting through, breaking through the ranks of those angelic hosts. In the name of Jesus, shut it out. I am inaccessible. In the secret place of the Most High, I have complete security. Say that with me. I have complete security. Amen. How many people know that you have angels that are security guards? Amen. That flank you, go around you, go with you everywhere that you go. They are waiting for the release of God's Word through you. Psalm 103 says that they are hearkening diligently to the voice of our God. Amen. Tonight, we receive that security. We receive that. Amen. Security of the Most High. His hand upon us. His wings that cover us. Hallelujah. Forgive me if I'm enjoying this too much. But I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. There are many followers of Jesus Christ who seem to know very little, even today, of this secret place of the Most High. They even read the sound, but yet the practical application, the practical outworking of this is absent from their lives. They don't even know what it is to abide under his shadow. Many seem to regard this as only a thing for, you know, the super spiritual. Yet David, if he wrote this, was a warrior and a man well acquainted with the realities of life. It is true that the life of the Spirit seems to come more easily to some than others. But there is an aspect of the secret place of the Most High that is for everyone who puts his trust in him. It's for me. It's for my family. It's for my children. It's for my grandchildren. In the name of Jesus, not to visit, but to abide. Not to go there sometimes, but to live actually there. Spurgeon goes on to say this, every child of God looks towards the inner sanctuary and the mercy seat, yet all do not dwell in this most holy place. They run to it at times and enjoy occasional approaches, but they do not habitually reside in this mysterious presence. Spurgeon goes on to say, in the shadow of the Almighty, that this is an expression which implies great nearness. We must walk very close to a companion if we would have his or her shadow fall on us. I love this. We receive his protection. Just look at the other night across the bridge in Maryland. Who would have thought people would have made that trip maybe a hundred times, a thousand times that live in that area. It would have been just like the most normal thing in the world for them to do, but not this night. This night there's a ship filled with containers. It is about to take it down. I mean, who would have thought of something like that? But yet these things are happening. We hear of the earth groaning. We hear of things that are going on within the earth groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. I don't believe that we even have a grip or a grasp of the days that we're living in. Sometimes, you know, people will say, well, this is just these preachers, you know, they get on their high horse and they, you know, they just want to preach, you know, the fear into us so that we'll, you know, comply. If you think I'm doing that tonight, you have misread me so terribly. What I'm trying to do is just to offer some good wisdom that things are not good out there. Things are not right out there. For us, the church, I believe things are getting brighter. In the world, things are getting darker. But we have to know in whom we believe and know that he is well able to keep that which we commit. We have to know that if we're going across a bridge, that it's going to stay up. We have to know that if we're getting in an airplane, it's going to stay in the sky. Come on, everybody. We have to know that if we're traveling roads, we're protected. It's a different type of day. But thank God we're not doing this on our own. He's with us every step of the way. 
Thank God, amen, that we just don't have to hunker down somewhere. Amen, that this secret place goes with us everywhere that we, because he never leaves us nor forsakes us. Hallelujah. I love this. I want you to go, please, to, Psalm, or to Isaiah 32, verse 2. Just go to the scriptures with me. It's fun. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 32, 2. And each one of them shall be like a hiding place from the wind and a shelter from the storm, like streams of water in a dry place, like the shade of a great rock in a weary land to those who turn to them. Uh, You can go with me, please, uh, to Psalm 63, verse 7. Psalm 63, verse 7. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. Declare this right now. I am under the shadow of his wing. I am protected by the shadow of the rock. Amen. Isaiah 49 verse 2. I am protected by the shadow of his hand. Isaiah 49 verse 2. And he has made, yeah, and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me and made me a polished arrow. In his quiver has he kept me close and concealed me. I'm going to say it again. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me and made me a polished arrow. In his quiver has he kept me close and concealed me. Declare this with me right now. I am covered by the shadow of his hand. So let's do this again. See this. I am covered by the shadow of his rock. I am covered by the shadow of his wings. I am covered by the shadow of his hand. Even Song of Solomon 2 verse 3 says, I am covered by the shadow of the tree. These first two verses of Psalm 91 use four wonderful titles for the names of God. The Most High, Ilion, Almighty, Shaddai, the Lord, Yahweh, my God, Elohe. It's amazing how in a very short few words, he has presented himself in different ways. He is our Elion. He is our Shaddai. He is our Yahweh. And he is our Elohe. What is he? He is the Most High. I want you to declare that right now. He is my Most High. He is my Almighty. He is my Lord. And he is my God. And then it goes into, he is my refuge and my fortress. The one who lives intimately with God knows the greatness of this protection. God himself becomes like a mighty refuge, a mighty fortress to the believer. Mayor said this about my refuge. Have you ever said definitely, O Lord, thou art my refuge, fleeing from all other? Have you sheltered in him from the windy storm and the tempest, from the harrow by day and the pestilence by night, from man and devil? You must avow it. Do not only think it, but say it. You see, many times what we'll do is we'll just remember Psalm 91. We'll just remember the protection of Psalm 91. But it offers us more than just a remembrance. It offers us more than just the memory. Oh, Psalm 91. As if we throw it out there like something that's just going to work by magic. No, this is an actuality. This is the truth, that the believer can have what they say. 
And we say tonight, he is our refuge. He is our fortress. In the name of Jesus, said again, he is my refuge. Oh, say it like you mean it. He is my refuge. He is my fortress. In God will I trust. We go on to say, my God, in whom I will trust, you trust, they trust, I will trust. This close relationship with God and all the benefits that come from it are from those who know Yahweh as God and who tr truly trust in him. As a believer receives his protection, his comfort and care, he trusts God all the more and increasingly knows him as God. Enter Spurgeon again. He said this, men are apt enough to proclaim their doubts and even to boast of them. Indeed, there is a party nowadays of the most audacious pretenders to culture and thought who glory in casting suspicion upon everything. Hence, it becomes the duty of all true believers to speak out and testify with calm courage to their own well-grounded reliance upon their God. And we're there. You see, today, guys, we can't be quiet. We have to speak up. We can't just be just, you know, just murmuring in the background. Amen. Just a, a silent squawk periodically. People need to know what we believe. I believe. If you're on an airplane and it's going down, guess what? Somebody, some heathen will want to know that there's a believer somewhere. At that moment, amen, you can preach a message, but you can just lift up the name of Jesus and save everybody. I'm not talking about their eternal place in heaven. I'm talking about from a plane crash. Do you know that God can stop that plane crashing because of you? I'm going to say it again. God can stop that plane crashing because of you. God can stop that atrocity because of you. You can be in the mall in something that was wanting to be of an evil nature taking place, but it can happen because of you, because you brought the secret place with you. I honestly believe. Look at Peter. He said that his shadow fell. I don't believe it was just his shadow. I believe it was the proximity of the anointing that was working on his life. Amen. He had come to such a place in God that there was a proximity that if anybody walked into it, they were getting touched by God whether they wanted it or not. Sickness had to leave. It could not stay. It could not cohabitate with the anointing. And I declare that right now. That sickness on your body cannot cohabitate with that anointing that is working within you. you may, amen. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are not the house of sickness. Isn't the Lord good? Whew, he's doing a much better job than this than I thought was going to happen. I want you to go by Psalm 91 and here we are. Thank God he does these things because he wants to properly posture us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Just give me a few more minutes. Spurgeon went on to say many different biblical examples of people who had their own expression of the phrase, my God. In Ruth 1.16, it says this, my God is the young convert's confession. In John 20, verse 28, Thomas, my God is the individual's Christian's belief. In, in uh, 1 Kings 22, verse 14, Micah, my God is the declaration of the believer when opposed. In Genesis 32, 28 to 30, Jacob, my God is the secret vow of the believer in consecration. In Matthew 27, verse 46, Jesus, my God, is the deepest comfort to God's children in great woe. In Exodus, Miriam, chapter 15, 21, my God is the celebration for the victorious believer. I declare tonight, it's our time to celebrate. I declare tonight that there is a joy unspeakable and full of glory. I declare tonight that when Paul said it, rejoice, and again I say rejoice, there is something to rejoice about. 
Come on, how many people believe it's time to put a smile on our face? It's time to put our shoulders back, lift up our head. Amen. Get strength in our backbone and say, I'm able to face tomorrow because I know that I have this trust in him. Hebrews says that if you put your trust in the Lord, you will never be disappointed. Amen. Shut it out. I will never be disappointed. It's good stuff. And so this week when you hear the crowd begin to spew what they want to say, when you hear people say the things that they want to say, when you hear that wickedness that comes out of people that are hurt by life, you know that there's a voice that steadies you. There's a voice that stabilizes you. The voice of a stranger you will not follow. You will hear his voice in the name of Jesus. I don't believe we live in days that you're to hear a voice behind you, amen, to determine the way that you walk in. We have this voice living in the inside of us. He is the guide in the inside. The Lord is our shepherd we shall not want. He makes us lie down in green pastures, leads us beside still waters. In Jesus' name, I declare it this week, our cup's going to overflow, amen, that we're going to live in the abundance of the mercy of God, the covenant operations of God, to see his ways established in our lives. In Jesus' precious name. I want you to lift your hand and say, there's more for me. Come on, say it like you mean it. There's more for me than there is against me. Say it again. There's more for me than there is against me. One more time. There's more for me than there is against you. See, because what the enemy wants to do at times is he wants to make you feel like you're on your own. Even within your family, sometimes it can feel I'm slightly misunderstood. You say, well, not in my house. Well, I don't know what to say about that. But every one of us from, from time to time can feel slightly misunderstood or slightly unheard, misquoted, misrepresented. But I tell you in him, we have the fullness of security that we run into him and we are safe that he makes sense out of the crazy in the name of Jesus and he's bringing order to all chaos in the name of Jesus we give him praise I'm nearly finished in Psalm 91 verses 3 and 4 God brings us protection comfort and care surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence he will cover me with his feathers, and under his wings I will take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I love this. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the filer. Yes. Amen. We could say it like this, following the general statement of the first two verses, now the psalmist describes the specific ways God protects and cares for his people beginning with rescue from those who would trap God's people as the fowler snares birds. I declare tonight that you'll never be trapped. I'm going to say it one more time. You will never be trapped. I'm going to say it one more time. You will never be trapped. I'm going to read this to you again. These two verses begins and brings us into this revelation that God truly protects and cares for his people. He talks about the rescue from those who would trap God's people as fowler snares birds. I declare in the name of Jesus that you in your life will never be trapped like a fowler snares birds in the name of Jesus. One gentleman said this in Psalm 119, verse 110, these are metaphors for the plots which would entangle our affairs. You can also go to Psalm 140, verses 1 to 5. But these things are set up to try and compromise our loyalties. But I declare it over you that there is no compromise. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shield and my buckler. He is my exceeding great reward. He goes before me, comes behind me, undergirds me. He is the light to my path. In the name of Jesus. Come on, do you believe that tonight? The word is a lamp unto my feet. I can see where I am. And he is a light unto my path. I know where I'm going. Proverbs tells us that the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. 
And back to Spurgeon as we close. We are the foolish and weak as poor little birds and are very apt to be lured to our destruction by the cunning foes. But if we dwell near to God, he will see to it that the most skillful deceiver shall not entrap us. See, ladies and gentlemen, the devil is defeated. Even though he has a couple more moments coming up, and it would take too much time for me tonight to even expound on that. But the works of the enemy were destroyed. Principalities were disarmed. And truly, as it's being played over tonight, the Lord has become our hiding place. It's so powerful, so beautiful. See the devilish, the devilish, uh, the devilish tactics. Lend me your teeth. The good thing about having false teeth is that you can swap them out. <laughs> Try out somebody else's for the night. Take somebody else's out for a spin. <laughs> the devil and his agents often work, work late into the night, sometimes work through the night. These fowlers want to snare. These fowlers want to trap. These fowlers work in secret. These fowlers change their trapping methods. These fowlers often entice with pleasures or profit. These fowlers often use others as decoys. Boy said this, the most striking feature of this section and the one following is the use of the singular you throughout, which is a way of saying that these truths are for each person individually. They are for you if you will truly trust or abide in God. See, the horrible thing would be for us to do right now is just to generalize. Well, this could be for them. And No, you have to bring it into you, that God is speaking to you. How many people receive this tonight? That God is speaking to you. He's speaking to your family. Please never underestimate the lengths that the enemy will go to, to try and deceive, to try and seduce, to try and catch you off guard. If you look at Nehemiah, just study that. I dare you to read the whole thing. Break it down. Take a look at it. You know, the enemy will stop at nothing. He's such a low, yeah. Yeah. low effort that he will even try to come through your closest, your nearest, and your dearest. Amen. He will stop at nothing and will never stoop too low to try and catch you off guard, to trap you, to ensnare you, to catch you. But for years, God has compounded these scriptures into my spirit. They that dig a ditch for you will be falling into it themselves. They that lay a net for you will be caught in it themselves. I'm not talking about doing wrong and getting off scot-free. I'm not talking about just living your life like, you know, just a, a wretched hell, deserving sinner, and, you know, just then you're just pulling out these scriptures just to protect your back. I'm talking about those who are making the secret place of the Most High their abiding place. I'm talking about those that are doing what they know to do to walk the straight line, to walk the straight path, to walk a life of no compromise. Because that's what's being asked. You know, in this modern world, you know, sometimes people wonder, why does he cry the way he cries? Well, I could ask that of Jesus. Why did he cry over the city? I know it's prayer. 
But there was also a part of humanity Tears speak volumes. And there are tears that have shouted in the presence of God more than what we would ever try to articulate with our tongues. But there's a reach that's coming from heaven to steady people, to posture people. Know this from this night, that to say that you would never be caught out would be pride talking. But our most and our best would be faith that would speak, that we would choose the word, we would choose his way, we would choose to do it his way and not allow ourselves to become so vulnerable as to think that we were untouchable. Say, why would you say that after preaching everything that you've just said? Because as humans, unfortunately, we live in a flip-flop lifestyle. For the most part, we're in one minute. For the most part, we're somewhat out the next. For the most part, we're having a good day. And then all of a sudden, what was that? Slapped you upside the head, came like a freight train out of nowhere. Like you're trying to grapple, you know, you're trying to, what was that? And sometimes we don't even know that we were hit. How many people knows that to be the truth? Sometimes we don't even know that the snake had wrapped itself around your neck, slithered up to your shoulder. But you see, I want to befriend you, Cynthia. And when I get friends, I'll bring you into my friendship. But that may not be for the right motives. I'll give you everything so that you think I'm amazing. So that when something goes down, you're going to think more of me. I'm already skewing your vision. I'm already getting your eye off the... How many people knows what I'm talking about? See, seduction, deceptions... The plying, the prying, the workings of the enemy comes so many different ways. Please don't be moved by somebody being nice to you. Please don't be moved by somebody dropping gold on you. Please don't be bought. I want you to lift your hand and say, I can never be bought. Come on, say it like you mean it. Come on, this is from your mouth to God's ears. You will never be bought. That's why we have such an honor code that works here at church. Because this, this works by heart. You think all these prayers, these people praying, worshiping, giving of their time, that this is done just because of a sense of duty? Now it's an investment. It's a life investment. It's a heart that's invested in. That's the highest thing that you can bring here. And with your heart in it, that means that you will not allow it to be destroyed. Because part of you then will be destroyed also. Lift your hands all over this room. Those that are watching online tonight, these are powerful truths. Powerful truths. But I declare this over you, that your foot will never be caught. You'll never be bought. You'll never be snared. And you'll never offer yourself to the highest bidder. Pray in the spirit with me. I trust you got something out of this tonight. 
for he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide 